This is One on One. We are pleased to welcome Amanda Messi, President and Chief Executive Officer of Bergen Volunteer Medical Initiative. Good to see you. Thanks. Our, our friends at Horizon told us all about what you're doing. We asked them who's out there as partners that are making a difference in the community when it comes to providing quality health care to people who don't have access. By the way, how many people don't have access that we're talking about? There are thousands in Bergen County. It's a number that's kind of hard to pin down because it's constantly changing. Millions across the nation. Millions across the nation, thousands in Bergen County. What happens, Amanda? You're, you're very close to this. By the way, your 10th anniversary is going to be in the fall. Yes. Right? Yep. So, um, and people can go on the website and find out more, but I'm curious about this. For, for, for those of us who have coverage, we have health insurance. Sometimes we can get so far away from it that we don't appreciate or understand what it's like not to. Describe right. that. So if you don't have health insurance, you, um, you, put, you put off health care until you what get... What does that mean, you put off That healthcare? means you just don't take care of yourself. You, you don't go to the doctor because it costs money. Um, and then you get really, really sick and you go to the emergency room. And then? And then they take care of whatever your immediate problem is and then say, go see your doctor and you don't have a doctor. Devil's so, advocate, someone says, yes, yeah, so you're getting taken care of, but that's, it's not that simple. It is not First that of all, the cost is greater. Yes. But are you really dealing with the underlying causes? No, you're of not. What, yeah, talk about that. No. So for people particularly with chronic conditions, so say you're a diabetic, um, you, um, you go to the hospital because you've gone into diabetic shock, um, they treat you, they turn you back out, say, go to your doctor. You don't have a doctor to go to, and so it's kind of a cycle. You, you end up back in the hospital. Hmm. You could end up losing a leg, yeah. Talk about your organization, specifically how you're able to help people who do not have um, the health care that they need. Okay. Um, we actually are part of the Volunteers in Medicine network of uh, free clinics. There are about 88 of them in the country. And the model is that we use volunteer clinicians, so doctors, nurse practitioners, nurses, dietitians, physical therapists, to uh, provide free care for our patients. Free? Free. How does that work? 100% free. They come to, the, come to our office, they check in, and they see the doctor. And your resources come from where? <laughs> it's all fundraising. Oh, I'm sorry, you're talking about public broadcasting? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, people don't realize, they go, oh, that's the thing you do with right. your organization. Right. But a lot of your time is spent, as it is for those of us in this world, raising the dollars, having the resources. What is that, you know, the famous quote, no money, no, no money, mission. No mission, exactly. No money, no mission. Is exactly. it the same thing? Or, no pe or do people turn around and go, oh, my God, you're doing great work. Here's here's a hundred grand. Here's five. that doesn't happen. Mm, a couple people, but, but that's not but the not norm. Not often, no. It's that's not, not the norm. So not. you're out there making. What's the case that you make when you're out there raising money? Uh, the case is that these people, our patients, don't have access to health care, um, and they are the people who are taking care of your children, who are serving your meals in the restaurant, who are doing your nails or your hair or you know mowing your lawn. And you want them to be healthy uh, because, first, they're around you and your loved ones. Right. Um, secondly, if they're not healthy, they can't go out and work and bring in money to take care of their families. So, yeah. So let me try this. And um, this segment, one-on-one -on -one is not a quote-unquote quote, quote, unquote, political show. It's not what we do. We don't even do public policy, per se. But right. we are curious about certain things. As we're doing this program in the spring of 2019, th there's been a recent discussion that there are some who want to uh, repeal and do away with mm -hmm. the Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare. Right. And we're not going to debate or discuss the pros and cons. That's for you to decide. Or potentially the courts, if certain people have right. their way. What would it mean if the entirety of the Affordable Care Act were dismantled as it relates to the people we're talking about? What would it mean? Well, I, it wouldn't actually affect the people that we see now because they already don't have insurance. But who would it affect for those who do? It would affect do? people who have currently have Obamacare, and um, they would lose their insurance. So they would then begin ending up in the emergency room um, and not have access to doctors. So, so to be clear, a 26-year-old or 25-year-old who is on his or her parents' insurance mm -hmm. plan because the parents have coverage, if the Affordable Care Act were repealed, that 24, 25, 26-year-old would no longer have it. Exactly, yes. And so, the pre-existing condition issue? Would 
go go away. Yeah. Okay. I'm curious about this. Um, you talk about a culture of caring, philosophy. Could you make that more real for us? I can. Um, it sounds kind of corny, but it's a real thing. It doesn't sound corny, I just want to understand yeah. it. Yeah, um, it means that we treat our patients and our volunteers and our staff with respect. Um, we make sure that uh, they feel um, respected and cared for and uh, like somebody's got their back. You know, you and I were talking before we got on the air, man, and I asked you about the Korean community, which is significant mm -hmm. in Bergen County. Very big, right? yes. And I asked you this question, so we'll talk about it on the air. The, the, the whole term cultural sensitivity, cultural awareness, right? How is it even relevant? And, and I'll ask it this way. Is it any different serving those in the Korean American community in terms of health services or any other community? It is, actually. How so? We're finding that it is. Um, besides the obvious difference of language, uh, there are cultural differences in the way that uh, the Korean community um, interacts with their health care providers and um, they, uh, there are different cultural norms when it comes to, to health care uh, that we don't know about. I mean, we're, we're very good at taking care of the Latino community because we have a, a significant number of Latino patients. Um, so we have many speak, people who speak Spanish. Um, we understand the culture because we have many people who live that culture. But well, um, Bergen County has a huge Korean population, yes, and the yes. Korean population is growing yes. across this state and this nation. Yes. But is it, is it, why is that more challenging? Well, than the Hispanic community. Because we don't know what we don't know is the first piece. Like we, we really kind of had no idea what we were getting into when we started the Korean program. We've got a young woman who is Korean American who is running the program. Um, so she's teaching us. Uh, there are health care concerns. Uh, hepatitis B is big in the Korean community. So mm. um, there are health concerns that we need to learn about. And it, it, it's just proven to be a real challenge to integrate. Diet matters as well. Diet matters as well. Is the diet Overall, I hate to generalize, but is it in some ways different in the Korean community? It's American? very different in the Korean community, yes, yes. Uh, tenth anniversary coming up, I mentioned before. What does it mean to you to work with the folks at the Bergen Volunteer Medical Initiative and do the work you do every day? What does it mean to you on a personal level? On a personal level, I love going to work every day. Um, Generally, well, pretty much always, people have a smile on their face. They want to be there. So it's, it's a nice place to go to. It's very nurturing. So if there's something going on with me personally, you know, people notice, and they ask me about it, and it's the same kind of care that we extend to our patients. That's what you mean by a culture of caring, it isn't is. it? It is. So glad we have people who care the way you do and your colleagues, and congratulations on uh, 10 years. Thank you. I wish you uh, continued success in making a difference in the lives of others. Uh, Amanda Misty, thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate Thanks. it. This is One on One. We're coming to you from NJTV Studios in Newark, the Agnes Vera Studio. We'll catch you next time.